Our guest today will, is going to be with us in the morning and tonight at Campus Community. Brock Gill is a renowned illusionist, humorist, and recently he started doing a lot of stunt work all around the world. He's most known for a documentary that the Discovery Channel and the BBC did together uh, on the life of Christ, and he was the central figure in that documentary. Brock has been on everything from America's Got Talent to uh, literally a special guest on the largest touring uh, Christian thing called Winter Jam in the world, and uh, he travels all around the world doing what he does. You're going to have a lot of fun today with the great Brock Gill. Come on, let's put our hands together, let's watch this reel, and let's get ready. When I say the word rock, I do not mean a natural rock, but a rock of your salvation. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is taken fair. My passion is to shine the light. If you were born here on planet Earth, that means you were born as a sinner. Sin is in your DNA. That means you're not perfect. Then this is bad news. I want to see revival in our churches. I want to see the lost saved. God knew this would be a problem, and because he's madly in love with us, he sent his son, his name was Jesus. See, the bad news is, because of sin, we are separated from God, but the good news is this, Jesus made a way. Jesus is the light, and I want to shine that light. I want to see that light change our churches, change our families, change our cities, and change our country. Hello, hello. Hey, everybody. How you guys doing? I'm so glad that you're here. We have someone. Um, let me just grab somebody off the front row. How about, yeah, how about the guy with his hand up? You don't even have to come up here. You can stand right there. But um, what is your name, sir? I'm sorry? Ben. Ben, when you're ready. Say stop. Stop. It's kind of in between, but we'll go for it, all right? <laughs> ben, uh, would you like for my left hand to be safe or my right hand to be safe? Choose one. Right. Right hand. Thank you very much. Big hand for Ben. All right. So my name is Brock Gill, and I am uh, from, uh, I'm from, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, and, and I brought my cousins with me, and they're out there screaming right now again. But right now, I need to get somebody on stage. Could you please send me a volunteer? Just grab me some volunteers and bring them up here. You guys welcome them as they make their way up. Come on, come on. Come on up, guys. Let's have you stand right about here. And you, sir, right over here. Excellent. We got two, you guys, all right. All right, we got, we got two guys on stage that are gonna help us out. Uh, tell, what's your name? I'm Zach. Zach. And you, sir? Austin. Austin. Man, got the popular kids up here. Zach, tell me, I have a question for you. Um, how many times have you been arrested? Zero. Zero. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm not going to ask him. <laughs> 
I work with different police departments and prisons around the world, and a lot of, th- a lot of times I've, I've realized that they have different forms of restraint. There are handcuffs, straight jackets, and then there's this new thing that I just discovered, and it's called mini cuffs. They go around the thumbs, not the wrists, unless you have a really small wrists. Nope. <laughs> I'd like for you to hold out your thumbs, Zach. Just like this, I'm going to put it in there just enough, but I don't want to hurt you just enough to make sure that your thumbs don't slip out. They don't slip out, do they? Good. Um, This feels pretty good for you. This works. Now, here's what you'll notice. If you do try to pull your thumb out, there's something you're going to notice. There are teeth on the inside of the cuffs. And the more he pulls, the more the teeth dig into the flesh, and it's very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. You feel that? Yeah. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to put you in there. So what do you do? You go to school or? Yeah, I go to Liberty University. <laughs> Is that around here? You go to college around here? Okay. Um, do you study? What do you, what do you study? Business administration. Business? Okay. Cool. Um, wh- wh- so where are you from? Dayton, Ohio. Dayton. Um, so you're in, you're in college? Do you have a key? or something? Do you have a... Dayton, huh? That's cool. <laughs> you don't have a... Do you like those? You can keep them. You can just... You can just... No. No, it's okay, man. Hang on to that right there. I have an extra key right over here. I keep it for times like this. This could get awkward if I don't go ahead and jump to it here. But go ahead and take the uh, cuffs and let's go ahead and get you out just like this, Zach. There you go. Much more better. How's that? You're going to put me in the cuffs this time. I'll let you put the right side on. There you go. I'll let you put the left side on. Go ahead and put it down tight. Good. And yeah, when the knuckles turn white, you know you've done it right. So <laughs> you're going to hold on to the key just like this. You're going to hold on to the key like this. It's important that you stand right about here, just like this, and watch right here. Watch this, just like this. Come a little bit closer. Do this just right, just, just right, just like that. Lift it. No, no, no. Lift it. Lift. There you go. Perfect. We're going to try to escape out of this, but watch carefully. We're going to do this. There's nothing in the bag, just like this, nothing inside. We'll try to escape just like this. I need you just to go ahead and kind of get into it with me, though. Come on. All right. There you go. <laughs> He's got it, doesn't he? He's got it. That guy's got it right there. I like him, man. That's great. So <laughs> hang on to that right there. Good, good, good. And um, how about you? Can you dance as well? Let's see what you got. You kind of give it a little. There you go. <laughs> He's done this before. Good, good, good. That's great. Now lift it up just a little bit higher. And it's important right here, watch the lights right here. We're going to try to escape. Um, if you could, hey, where'd you get those boots right there? Where'd you get those? Those are nice. Oh, yeah? Yeah, where'd you get those? Maine. Maine. You drove all the way there to Maine to get the yeah. boots? That's cool, man. That's awesome. All right, good. I don't know if you saw, but he's got boots from Maine over there. So, all right, let's try this. Here we go. Hold on. Sorry. This is... This is awkward. Hello. <laughs> Com- no, I'm on stage right now. You got a call me later. I know it's in the morning. Sometimes I do things in the morning time too. Like, you got to call. Seriously, I'm on stage. You know, Mom, call me later. <laughs> All right, let's get this done, huh? Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. Hey, come on. Here we go. All the way inside. Left hand all the way inside. Left hand all the way inside. Hang on to that right there. Don't drop it. What are you? Oh, all the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom. You, sir, all the way to the bottom. Good. Just like this. Hold on. What's this? You got to be kidding me. Nothing inside. All the way to the bottom. Give them a big round of applause at the count of three. One, two, three. Come on. Big round of applause. Hey, you guys have been a whole lot of fun. They're going to clap for you. Thank you very, very much. Hold on. There's one more thing inside this bag. My favorite part is this right here. You, sir, I believe that's your watch. Give him a big round of applause. Thank you, sir. All right, buddy. Come on now. Come on. Are you having fun? (laughs) I 
need one more person. Go ahead and send me one more up here. Send me one more person up here, and you guys clap for her as she makes her way. Hey, how are you? I'm glad that you took a seat there. We're going to try something up here. Do you like, um, what's your name first? What's your? Jesse. Jesse. Jesse, do you like card tricks? You got fans up there, Jesse. Jesse, do you like card tricks? You do? Yeah. Cool. Do one. I don't know any. You don't know any? Okay, well, let me see if I can think of one. All right, let's do it this way. Why don't you just go ahead and just take a stack off and set them right there, just about half, and just set them right over there. Now, I'd go ahead and, like, go ahead and take the card that you cut to. Go ahead and take it. Yep. And look at it. And with your pen, I would like for you to write, wait till I turn my back. Write your name across the front side of the card. You understand? I'm going to turn my back here. I'll just leave the cards right there. Go ahead and write your first name or your last name. It doesn't matter which one, just as long as you can remember it. Write your name on there so I can't see. When you're done with that, place the card inside the deck and mix them all around. Just go ahead and mix them all around. Now, I'm not going to look as you're doing this, but do you feel pretty good at shuffling? I'm sorry? I'm okay. You're okay at shuffling? Go ahead and give it a shuffle then. No pressure. No one's watching. And just place the cards right there. Whenever you're finished, I'll go ahead and turn back around. Jesse, right? Jesse, you know what these are for, right? Yeah. Yes. Sure. You know what to do with them? Go ahead. Do it. I don't know. Here's what you do. You take the the silver dollars, and you put them right over the eyes just like this. Then you take tape like this, and you place right over the eyes like this right here. You continue by taking more tape and going over just like this right here. At this point, you start to get the idea, and you start taking tape and sticking it on there as well. There you go. Perfect, perfect. All right, so I'm going to take this one, and you know what to do. And let's give it one right across the face there. All right, is there any more? Just put it right across. All right, is it all on? She, she did a good job. This is, Jesse, you've done this before? No? Okay. All right. Go ahead, Jesse. Mix them. Let me know when you're finished. You good? Yep. All right. Watch your fingers. Jesse, is that your card? Yes. Take your card. Watch your hands. Thank you very much. And a big hand for Jesse. Take that home with you. Thank you very much. You guys, you were great. Thank you. All right. Man, I like coming to Virginia. You guys are a lot of fun. Wow. A lot of people here. 
They just keep going over here on the sides. This is, man, there must be over 100 people here. This is incredible. This is incredible, man. So thank you very much. Uh, as they mentioned before, I've been on the road doing this in a lot of different places, kind of been all over the place, and I've uh, been doing this full time now for, well, we're celebrating right now 20 years of being on the road. So um, we may have been to, how many of you, I'm just curious, how many of you have seen my show somewhere in the world before? A few of you here and there, excellent, yes. I wanted to do something, kind of one of my favorites, I wanted to do it here this morning. Um, I think you'll enjoy this, but... This all kind of makes me think about, you know, my time on the road has been kind of a constant, um, I'll put it this way, I'm always trying to find ways of what I do and make it better, trying to find the things that I'm doing and just figure out a way to perfect it and kind of take it to the next level. And it's been a whole lot of fun. The challenge has been great. But there's a certain amount of dissatisfaction that comes with it, where I'm like, I get to a point where I go, oh man, this is great, and I quickly realize but I could make that better, and I want to work on it harder, and I, I feel like I've, I never really arrive. I don't, know about you, I don't know about you, but there are times where I find myself dissatisfied even when doing good things. There's a certain amount of dissatisfaction in things that seem to be good things. This kind of reminds me of a story. One of my favorite stories comes from the first century, and it's a woman who goes in the middle of day, the day to draw water from a well. And when she gets to the well, she dr she's drawing the water, there's a man that looked at her and says, hey, if you drink this water, you're going to get thirsty again. And in her mind, she was kind of like, yeah, duh, no kidding. <laughs> he began to tell her a little bit about herself, and then he said, he said, if you drink this water, you'll be thirsty, but I have water. If you taste it, you will never thirst again. He says, it's water for your soul. It's called living water. And if you taste it, you'll never thirst again. That's about the time she realized who she was talking to. She was having a face-to-face -face conversation with the creator of the universe. She was talking to Jesus Christ. This story comes out of John chapter 4. And you'll see later in the chapter is that she has this encounter with Christ. He begins to tell her things that she thought no one knew. She was ashamed of certain parts of her life, which is one of the reasons maybe she was coming in the middle of the day to draw water from the well as opposed to early in the morning when everybody else is, because she had been married five times. She was currently living with someone who was not her husband. She probably wanted to avoid the ex or the ex's new thing. <laughs> so she goes by herself, but she meets a man and he says, look, essentially telling her, you've been looking for love and you were obviously dissatisfied. He said, but I have water that quenches the soul's thirst. If you taste it, you will never thirst again. There's a lot of people who live dry and thirsty souls, and it's because they've been drinking from the wrong well. Some people think, man, I'm, uh, the reason I'm dissatisfied, the reason I have no peace, and the reason life isn't working for me is because I'm young. Maybe it's your junior high. Maybe I'm, because you're in junior high, I'm, you know, maybe that's the problem. And, well, you're right. If you're in junior high, that's, that's tough years, right? <laughs> but the thing, if I could just get into high school, then everything would be good. If I'm, you know, if I could just be in high school, that's where it's at. Like, that's, that's cool, and I'll be good. And you guys, if, I don't know if anyone, ever, if, if you've ever been to high school, but it doesn't work that way, right? <laughs> And in high school, it's like, man, if I could just get my license, or if I could just, you know, find a new group of friends, if I could just find a new group of friends, or if I could just make the team, or if I could just, you know, get my own job or make some money, if I could just get out of the house, and if I could leave mama and leave her boyfriend, if I could just leave my, my father who's terrible, if I could leave this awful family, if I could just get into the next step, the next stage of life, if I could just get out of that, then everything will begin to kind of work out, and I'll be happy, I'll have peace, and everything will be good. If I could just get into that college, if I could just meet the one. If I could just meet the second one. <laughs> if I could just graduate, if I could just pay that off. If I could just get that right job, if I get the raise, if I could just have some kids, if I could have the, you know, if I could just buy this or if I could buy that, if I could have just these things somehow, everything will begin to kind of, kind of smooth out. And I'll be, if I could just, if I could just, and people spend their entire lives trying to figure out how to get to the next stage of life or find another things to put into their life, 
or they try to buy it, or they try to experience it, or they try to achieve it, or they try to celebrate it, or they try to find it in all these different ways, and they spend their entire life looking for something. And essentially, Jesus answers that question. You can search and drink all of the water of the world, all of the things of the world. You can search it, you can do it, you can experience it, but you will always be dissatisfied. But Jesus Christ has living water. If you taste it, you will never thirst again. This reminds me, as people search, this reminds me of something that on the new album, Anthony Kiedis, in a band called the Red Hot Chili Peppers, they have a song called Sick Love. There you go. I'm reaching you. There you are. Got some fans over there. I like that. And the lyric goes like this. It says, fame is just a trick. You see an empty glass. It will leave you thirsty and so very fast. Here's a guy who's made tons of money who's saying, hey, fame, it's a trick. It will leave you thirsty. Some people think, well, you need to be more popular, you need to have more money, you need to have these other things, and somehow that's going to make you feel good, and that's going to make you... And this is, my, this is my challenge to you as college students who are literally about to go and shape the world, who are literally going to go into the workforce and into the careers, who have places of influence, who will literally shape the world. My message to you is this, be careful. As we hunt for it, as we strive for it, keep the perspective. All of the things of the world will leave us dissatisfied. There's only one thing that's satisfied, and that is the living water in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Everything else can pour out of that, but we got to get that part right first. Maybe that's why Tom Brady, with a, with a handful of, all right, with, with a handful of Super Bowl rings says, I'm, I'm still not satisfied. There's something wrong. In an interview with Graham Benzinger, with Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson was asked this question, I find it really fascinating. They said, hey, um, basically, you were the world's, you know, one of the most richest athletes, one of the most recognizable athletes. I mean, this guy got paid $400 million to get into a boxing ring and knock somebody in the jaw. The dude had a lot of money. $400 million. He had mansions. He had houses. He had all of these different things. He was able to buy jewelry, and he was able to, he says, I got to buy jewelry. I got to buy cars. I got to do all these things. And women and all these things that I wanted. He said, I had it all. Matter of fact, he had a, he had a house with, a, with 35 bathrooms. I guess he really had to pee. <laughs> Every time he turned a corner, well, there's one. <laughs> And the question was simply like, basically like, dude, what was wrong with you? You had everything, but you were, you, you were weird. You were doing some weird things. And here was the answer. Mike Tyson, who'd made all the money and spent so much money on anything that he wanted, had, had everything, everything that the world said, if you have this, you'll be happy. He looked at him and said, you know what? I wasn't satisfied. Still wasn't happy. Somehow we sell this to people. We think, man, if you can make money, if you can get famous, if you can have a lot of friends, if you can have the stuff of the world, if you can have more toys, whatever it is, if you have this stuff, you'll be okay. And Jesus said, it doesn't work that way. He said, I have living water. That's the only thing where you will never thirst again. Why Jesus? Because of this. Because he is absolutely and desperately in love with each of you. Jesus Christ loves you. He left heaven, came to the earth to live a perfect, holy, sinless life, and to offer his body as the ultimate sacrifice. He died on a cross. They put his body into a tomb, and on the third day, he brought himself back to life. He conquered sin and he conquered death. If we put our faith in him, we can have that living water where he washes away our sin. He gives us new life where we never thirst again. And a relationship with him where he will take us to heaven and have, we will have eternal life. This is, this is incredible news. This is good news. This is the gospel. I've seen this gospel, this good news. I've seen it come alive in people. I'm talking really rich people here in the United States. People who are so rich, they have not one but two cars. You go, oh, yeah, so what? Big deal. People, that I'm talking about people that are so rich, they can walk into their house, hit a button, and lights come on. They can turn a knob, and fresh, clean water comes out. That kind of rich. Does that put a little perspective? All right, good. Here in the United States, we, we've got a lot, right? 
And I've seen people here in the United States who seem to have it all, who are never satisfied, but I've seen the gospel come in and beautifully wreck their lives in an incredible way. I've seen teenagers, I've seen college students who are finally introduced to Jesus and have their lives completely changed. I was one of them, but I've seen it in others. As we've shared the gospel as clear as I possibly can, I'm passionate about making it clear, but sharing the gospel in people all across the United States who finally get it. Some teenagers, uh, some college students, some young marrieds, Even those who have been retired for a long time, who are 60 and 70 and 80. Matter of fact, an 83-year-old great-great-grandmother came to my show not too long ago. She came with her great-grandkids. She came to watch the show. She hears the gospel. Her mind was just kind of opened up to this truth. She chose to follow Jesus, and it was an amazing thing for this woman. Just recently, we were in Alaska in the bush, the western side of Alaska. I love Alaska, too. We were in Alaska and went into some of these remote villages and these people who had never heard about God before, never heard, there's no, there's no churches there. I mean, middle of nowhere. We had to take ice roads to get to it. Watch that video on my YouTube, by the way. It was crazy. These sketchy frozen-ish ice roads all the way out there. And we go into these villages, and these people are just consuming this truth, and their lives are being changed. We went into the prisons there, and there was one guy on stage with me. I had him on stage, and I was doing a little thing with him, and I noticed he had these red welts all the way down his neck, all these big, you know, almost like scars on his neck, and I finally found out. I said, what's that guy's story? They said, well, this guy just tried to hang himself, and we, re- we rescued him right before he died. And now him, and, and, and among 25 others of hard criminals are sitting there listening to the math. He got saved along with 24 others. As I go into the city dump down in Managua, Nicaragua, to the poorest, yeah, one of the poorest places where people live off of what they find in the dump. I go down there two or three times a year, and I go and I do shows. I know it's it's the most weird place to do a show, but I go to the dump, and we do a show there, and people gather, and the poorest of the poor begin to hear the gospel and begin to be changed. Those who are murderers, those who are gang leaders, those who are into drugs, they, they they become just changed by the power of the gospel. As we've gone around the world to places like Australia and Europe and Greece and, and uh, oh, and, 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 and Egypt, and right in the middle of the revolution just a couple of years ago, we flew in and, the, and, and it was like this secret show we had to do. We, they took us out into the desert and, and people were invited to come to the show and you had to know someone to even get in. They didn't want to advertise it for fear, persecution. And we still had in three days 33,000 people show up. And the gospel was changing people. I mean, people were coming down, they were giving their drugs to us. I didn't know what I was supposed to do with it, but sure, I'll take it. Here. (laughs) People who were in all sorts of messes, they were were becoming believers and following Christ, including veiled Muslim women who were taking their veils off saying, you know what? No more fear. I'm going to follow Christ. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. He wants your life. And I'm passionate about making this gospel, this good news, I'm making it, to make it clear because I've seen it change people's lives. What Jesus said 2,000 years ago is true then, that's true today. If you drink this water, You will be thirsty, but Jesus said, drink from the living water and you will never thirst again. You will never thirst again.
you will never thirst again. You will never thirst again. You will never thirst again. Jesus said, drink from the living water, and you will never thirst again. never thirst again. Jesus said, drink from the living water. <laughs> and you will never thirst again. Thanks a lot. See you tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much.